What is happening budget builders and welcome back to the channel. Here beside me we have one of the first builds that we got going. We rescued it after sitting since 1988. We went through, got it running, dialed it in, put dual piston disc brakes up front, put a Dana 78 lug in the rear, and overall just made it a really nice driver. It has been incredibly reliable. It's a 300 inline six backed by a new process 541 five speed. But in today's video, it's time to add a few performance parts to really make this truck handle today's roads. How's it going? I'm Michael and this is Budget Builds. My dad and I bring rusty, crusty old cars back to life. Now it is 100% not a slouch by any means. You see I have the air cleaner pulled off and that little single barrel, very restrictive exhaust, just really doesn't put out what it can. Now you're probably gonna ask, so what are we gonna do? Here we have an Offenhauser C-Series intake, four barrel with extra air coming in. We need better air coming out. A lot of people go with the newer EFI dual manifold that they have. I'm not a huge fan of the look and it kind of makes a big jumbled mess, honestly. This right here puts nearly as much output, if not better output, than that exhaust. It's a full two and a half inch out. This is the HD manifold. This came on the industrial series engines and some of the big trucks. If you remember the exhaust video of us doing the comment, this is all the leftover exhaust that came with that. So we're gonna do a full three inch exhaust on this truck and use another Flow Monster $33 muffler. They sounded really nice and I think it'll be great on that truck. Went ahead, picked up an upgraded style HDI distributor. First things first. Let's get that carburetor, intake, and exhaust pulled off of this truck. We've had all of this off before, a couple times. So it should come out of here nice and easy. And off with the little single barrel. The intake and exhaust manifolds. Get our breather hose and booster hose off. Follow it with the exhaust. While we're getting everything swapped around as far as studs and everything and mocked up, I want to show you something. Look how little that hole is compared to that big old thing. Wow, what a difference. Not only that, no restriction straight through. And this one has your intake heater, your little restrictor here. And you're just tremendously losing flow. I mean, you're talking about 300 cubic inches, 4.9 liters coming out of that one tiny little hole. And wow, is that a huge difference. So running up in there, it's got a good, quite a bit of penetration, but then we'll back it off probably about right there. What are you watching? Is that good stuff? I like your videos. Thanks, babe. And there we have it. Definitely not my prettiest weld. I think it was kind of the angle that I was going at. I should have just, I don't know what I could have done different. But check that nice penetration out. It'll be sealed up. There's our manifold mocked up. With that collector, let's go ahead and start figuring out how to run this exhaust. <laughs> I think this guy right here with our little bit of rake will end up fitting nicely. Let's just get it measured up, cut down, and tacked on. I gotta give a big shout out to my friend Jeremy for throwing me his old Milwaukee chop saw, which I threw a chop blade on, a metal chop blade. 
and it'll make it nice and easy for us to cut exhaust. I will end up mounting this on a bench over there to make it even easier, but this will work out really great. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that there will work pretty good for us. I'll put a little mark here and then we'll throw a tack. But something we can cut back off because you can see it's positioned a little funny, but I think because we're welding it, I might be able to work it differently. That's just the way this is designed using this bigger exhaust. That's kind of the routing we're gonna have to go. With some finagling, I was able to get this pulled up tight. We just barely have this lid. It's not even quite a seam. It's right up to it. So that'll be easy to weld. This is looking good. We have clearance all the way down. There's our exhaust stuck up in there. Pulled over and then dipped out right here just to begin with. Before I go any farther on the exhaust, I do want to go ahead and get, you see I pulled the manifold. I want to get everything set up here. I'm gonna get the truck running because the angle it points down, how far out, can make all the difference in the world in the way that this truck's gonna sound. These need to be together in one piece before we can drop them on. Now I've got it stuck together and all three nuts put on, but I did leave it loose so we can adjust this because if we tighten it down, you can see it would change our gap out. We want this to be nice and flat for a good seal. And our first clearance issue here, we're actually hitting up against that alternator bracket. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and remove that, get this dialed in, and we may have to grind that out just a little bit to make some more room. Well, the intake and exhaust is back off, and that's because the reason it's hitting that alternator bracket, the gap here versus here, this whole side stepped way up. And the reason being is it appears this cast is just a little wonky, so I'm not sure if we can machine that down or what we'll have to do to get this nice and flat. I hate to take it out of a known good part that was already on a motor, but it's aluminum. It's going to be a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is actually take off a little bit of this right here. So Dad's got some paint here. We'll shoot it so we can see what we're sanding and we'll take it over here to the belt sander and knock it down a little bit and we should be able to get it pretty stinking close. That looks pretty stinking good. Let's check it out before we get any crazier. And with that shimmed up, we have no restrictions. All our bolts are going in nicely. We should have a good fix. I think everything will still be tight and that'll also hopefully give us room for our alternator bracket down here. That's a cool looking intake in there, isn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> and there we go, all tightened down in there. I've got it snugged up. We do have the alternator back on here. We ended up having to put two washers per bolt there to kick it out just a little bit to make some clearance. For fitment, we are running a little spacer here so everything clearance clearances nicely all right now I did go ahead and pop that front bowl open just to check everything over it has been many many years since that carburetor was used but from the looks of it it doesn't appear it ever had gas in it but the gaskets were pretty dry or all the rubbers were dry rotted so we went ahead and did the rubber hoses here accelerator pump diaphragm in there and then got new bolt gaskets and we should be good to go we have our fuel line ran our vacuum line we will be going through that distributor here shortly, but we want to try figuring out the exhaust first. We'll see how this 450 does. She might be a leaker. You want to turn it over real quick? Get some fuel pumping. Pretty please. Get some fuel pumping? Did you put fuel in it yet? No. Get some fresh high test on this thing. I do like to run premium in this truck anyways especially with the new carburetor and once we gap those plugs out just a little bit. All right, fuel started pumping, come on. All right. There she goes, go ahead, she'll fire up. Ha <laughs> Yeah, it is. It Good 
sound of truck, isn't it? Huh? Main thing what? That's the main thing is, is it's not so loud in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it has been absolutely killing us driving this thing. Not only exhaust fumes, I'm not, I'm holding this funky, not only exhaust fumes, but no muffler. And it's been really obnoxious. So I think that'll give it a really nice sound. It's, I, I love the three inch exhaust. I think it's exactly what this truck needed. It's very throaty. It's still a six cylinder, but wow, does it sound really good. I cannot wait. We'll go ahead and pull that exhaust back off. Let it cool down, pull it off. Let's weld it all up. Let's stick it back in here. Figure out our throttling, a few other odds and ends, and then we can go ahead and swap our distributor and all out. It'll be time to tow with this thing again, won't it? <laughs> so now we can go ahead underneath here and tack everything together. I am gonna try to do it all in one piece because I think it'll look really nice and I hate to stick a clamp in here. There should be plenty of room. Good grief, how many chins do I have right here? <laughs> <laughs> we did pick up these really nice exhaust hangers, which we have perfect mounting spots for down those cross rails. So I'll go ahead and get this up into place and tack it as well so we can weld it in. But I'll tack it up, we'll pull it out and get it welded up. It's kind of hot to see. How cool is that? All out and one go. Let's burn it in. go full exhaust manifold to tip pretty pleased with it so now it's time to figure out the throttling this right here is way too short so what we've got here is this tractor cable we had these, we used to use them on bicycles. Super nice, has a liner on the inside, really smooth, strong industrial cables. What we're gonna do is cut this down and probably feed it and clamp it into this, which we will then bolt back to the firewall. And then we can use this bracket right here to actually adjust our cable tension. Raise it. So we were actually able to just run the threaded part down in here with the nut on it. He's gonna crimp it a little bit with the vice grip and then we'll change up what we were gonna do on the other end and try to figure it out. But I think this will be the safest bet. We don't want a throttle cable given out on us. And here's what we came up with using that bracketry. What we did is took this one, drilled a little hole through, a little bit bigger hole, our liner will go through and then the cable can come through here. And that should sit pretty well for us, and I think it'll do what we need. With our cable through, here's what we've decided to use. We've got these little crimp connectors for this cable. I can I double it up just for safety. Okay, it's all the way back. There we go. May need to do some more springage, but I think that'll work good for us. Let's make sure we get wide open throttle. 
we're lacking a little bit. All right, we can take the, the pedal stop down just a bit, huh? Yep. With the intake all on, throttle system all set up, exhaust bolted on, and just the way we want it, Oh, that's okay. Anyway, nice and tight. Let's go ahead and pull that distributor and get our new one dropped in. First thing, we'll take a reference of where our number one is, which is pointing right here. So we can set that the same on our other. With the coil off, it's time to go ahead and pull the distributor. The correct way to do this would be go ahead and get it top dead center, compression stroke of the number one cylinder. But how nice this is lined up. We just have to pop it out and stick it right back in just the way it is. And I think we'll be okay to go. But in case you wonder, the right way is the way we're not gonna do it. <laughs> as long as it works, right? There is no, it's, that's the right way. <laughs> so just take your clamp loose here. Um, probably not. And this right here is why I like all my different old school wrenches. Look at that. There she goes. After verifying everything here is exactly the same as the other one, we can go ahead and drop it in. Maybe. Or attempt to at least. And there we are, all back in there. Now, the colors are a little wacky. <laughs> probably gonna change some of this. The cap, I don't know about the blues, they kinda clash. I'll probably end up painting those black at some point. These wires were actually some fairly new ones that were off of a V8, so they're a little long anyways, and we'll probably go ahead and put a new set, but they're on there for now, and they can get us back on the road and running. Let's fire this thing off, or attempt to, see where our timing is, go ahead and get it dialed in. We want this thing to be right at about 600 RPM, eight degrees before top dead center at idle and then we try to run it now i'm sure you've probably noticed it has that good bit of ticking that is actually a lifter probably the past three or four weeks i haven't driven this truck very much when i let it sit for more than a week or two it has one lifter that's kind of sticky and it'll tick for a little while once i start get back into regular driving it it lifts back up and sounds pretty good and, and quietens is up that is one thing we'll probably do here in the near future is go ahead and get a new set of lifters put in this truck just so we don't have to worry about hearing that little ticky tick. Maybe get some backfires and stuff. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Remember how voltage is on those. Hopefully this thing... That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So even though there's timing marks on this side of the engine and this side, you work off of this side on this one. Don't know, blows my mind. This one is six degrees before top dead center is actually where you set the timing. I was wrong at eight. That's eight is your standard per se, per all your V8s and everything. So this one is six degrees. It's an inline six, so it's six degrees. <laughs> and then after that, we re-hooked up our vacuum made sure our timing kicked up where we wanted to and it wasn't going crazy and everything looks really good so that's it this is a uh, this is our setup full three inch exhaust hd manifold offenhauser four barrel intake holly 450 modern distributor healthier coil we did go ahead and take the gap from 32 to 36 to about 40 to begin with we may kick it up a little bit more uh, we'll check our burn in a little bit and see how everything's looking but very smooth crisp accelerate or throttling up i'm excited to see how this thing does let's give us some road test we have something in store let's put it to work towing good Just back out and go to pull up.
Well, we're just about back to the house. We stopped here at a local gas station to pick up a couple drinks. After pulling that back there out, which you'll see in a later video, but the 66 F350 here is performing excellent, better than ever. It is. It pulls really strong now. It's nice and quiet in the cab, so it's pretty comfortable, and it stops well with those disc brakes and the trailer brakes and it's really do what we wanted to do as a tow rig and really showing exactly who we are the kind of stuff we build but that'll wrap it up for this episode i really hope you enjoyed that if you do and you haven't already be sure to hit the subscribe button notification bell if you're already subscribed thank you all so much for the positive love and support that we've had on this channel we really do appreciate it peace out and catch you all on the flip side